there are external forces that negate the quality of your life this is why when god is doing that which is ultimately on your inside there are also other spiritual protocols that you need to subject yourself to in order to have external victories because when the devil is fighting you on your job you will need something else other than forgiveness that thing that has been worked into you you will need to work it out the one you work out is what we call power because if there's no power you will be righteous but you will be poor if there's no power you will be righteous but you will be defeated if there's no power you will be righteous and you will be irrelevant in john chapter 10 verse 10 jesus said the thief cometh not but for to kill to steal and to destroy so the devil has a threefold agenda if he doesn't succeed in killing you he will steal from you if he doesn't succeed in stealing from you he will destroy you utterly are we together he said but i am come that you might have life and life to the full so these are two spirits trying to bring you victory or destruction as the case may be the devil wants to destroy god wants to establish and so we need to understand how to deploy the resources of the realm of god in order to actualize that which god has in mind in fact in first peter 5 8 he said the devil prowls like a roaring lion so the business is a serious matter to the devil he is running everywhere looking for every opportunity to kill this is why paul said in ephesians 4 27 giving no place to the devil because this man is operating like a lion he wants to kill he wants to destroy he has hunger to see men destroyed but the only thing we need to do to keep him at bay is to bring power into the equation because when power comes his agenda will become futile for the bible said if a strong man keeps his house he said his goods are in safety the only time his goods will be at risk or endangered position is when the one coming is stronger than him and so the idea behind the doctrine of power is to grow in power to secure your context to secure your boundary so that the agenda of god for your life will find fruition and will find expression and so if there is no power the believer is an endangered species this is why paul summarized the whole gospel in romans 1 16 he said i'm not ashamed of the gospel of christ he called it what the power and so if you don't want to say the gospel you can also say the power you are correct he said for the gospel is the power of god unto salvation when jesus was about to ascend he told them in luke 24 49 i know you have been discipled you have learned some things you know some principles but tarry until you are endued with power the creatures that are coming they it's only power they understand the simplest language to speak in the demonic realm is the language of power. And so if you don't have power, your principles will fail you. Your wisdom will fail you. So tarry. Don't go and say, my teacher is Jesus Christ. If you don't have power, you will embarrass this, your teacher. I've taught you all there needs to be taught. But tarry until you are endued with power from on high. Now, Jesus went and came back after 40 days. You know, he still taught them about the kingdom for 40 days. When he was about to ascend finally, he still told them, not many days from now, Acts 1 8, you shall receive the Holy Ghost, not and wisdom. Yes, the Holy Ghost furnishes wisdom, not and favor. The Holy Ghost furnishes favor. But what is most urgent is power. He said, you will receive the Holy Ghost and power, and you shall be witnesses unto me. So the only way you can fulfill destiny in grand style. It's when power is added to your quiver. Hope you know that even the Son of God could not fulfill destiny except as he returned in the power of the Spirit. Jesus was walking in Nazareth for 30 years. The Bible introduced him in John chapter 1 as God, as creator, as life, and as light. But he couldn't fulfill destiny for 30 years. The moment Luke 4, 14, 15, Matthew 4, 15 introduced power, he entered the temple and destiny was activated immediately he said and he returned in the power of the spirit and he said according as it is written by isaiah the prophet the land of zabulum 
the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan. Galilee of the Gentiles, the people that sat in darkness, have seen a great light. So, you mean all the while that Jesus was walking, his presence had no impact. His presence had no implication. Zabulum was still in darkness until he came with the rod of power. The moment power came, prophecies began to speak volumes in the dimension that subjugates the operations of darkness. And this same Jesus that went in and out of the synagogue quietly, at best asking and answering questions, suddenly returned to the synagogue, this time with power, and he carried the scrolls of Isaiah. And he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he has anointed me. He, the, the utterance has changed. This time around, it's no longer a bargain. This one is commandment. Because power had come. And so if you will fulfill your destiny audaciously, you need to understand how power works. And so tonight, I want to give us an introduction into the dynamics of power. And so three things that will make up my introduction is number one definition of terms number two will be the levels of power and then number three will be the dimensions of power then we will stop here because this one is basic if you know these ones you can do some things if we are able to do these three then maybe next week i will go to deeper syllabus of power are you ready so let's begin with definition of terms. I'll read one one scriptures because of our, one one scripture because of our time. Definition. Ha, this song. Sing it one time. It's anointing my soul. Holy Of what you people created before I came, my soul is now entering the economy or the atmosphere. Now I can use what they created to change somebody's story. That's why you need understanding. You can read the movements of the spirit, and when certain operations begin in your soul, you will know how to channel it. Let me show you something. My soul has been anointed because the moment you play that song. There's an anointing that came with that song. Um, my soul, it began to draw my soul. If I begin to sing it again and again, the intensity will start growing. And I can do more. But with this little that came into my spirit, let me show you something. Don't be distracted. Just, just, okay, just close your eyes and relax. I want to channel this energy I'm feeling now to touch somebody. Just to help you understand something. You know, it's doctrine of power, so it's good to show some things. I can channel it for healing, I can channel it for favor, and I can also use it to activate grace, a grace in somebody's life. Father, by the Spirit, by the Spirit of the living God, by the instrumentality of words, now I release this power. Aya, Mahela Fai. Elekuma Harakada Azezana Mandekaria Efefalila Hatakai Ea Ah! Mamra, 
walks, you will be invincible. Now, I want to break a yoke of somebody's life. Somebody, you've been in one cycle for at least 10 years. Because of what I'm sensing now, I can break that thing. It's an energy. Father, everyone held in one spot. I decree now, let an anointing, an anointing that engenders speed, an anointing that moves men, an anointing that orchestrates transition. Let it rest. Take that grace now. In seven days, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I end that cycle and I decree a new beginning. Take that power. Help that sister. A cycle just ended. A new cycle has been created by the Holy Ghost. I move you forward. somebody's face wealth by favor the bible said god gave favor to the israelites and they spoiled the egyptians because i can um, there are possibilities opening father now i break the yoke of poverty and i open the gate i open the gate for wealth by the instrumentality of favor whoever that one is now by the holy ghost Paketo Sakatia, Barakata, Setinas, Peras, Peras, I bring it into your space. Just like the quails came into the camp of the Israelites, just like manna came into the camps of the Israelites, and they were in heaps and thrones by the Holy Ghost. Now I bring the forces of wealth, I bring the forces of wealth into your space, and I break poverty and stagnation. Somebody will receive a gift that is 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 more valuable than every possession, everybody your lineage put together has. It will come, you will not work for it. It will be a gift come to you by free cost. I release that weight of favor, that investment of favor that provoke that kind of oppression by the Spirit of God. Step into that order. a commander if you know if you know something can just float through the atmosphere in a moment and you can alter the possibility of seven years in a moment it takes understanding mm. ah. sit down Sit down. Since it's Bible study, let's stop here. It's Bible study. If you know how these things work, the Bible said, as the wind blew it, 
as it listed. He said, no man knows from whence it cometh or where it goeth. He said, so are they that are born by the Spirit of God. It is mysteries and spiritual understanding that make us become like the wind. This my brother prayed in tongues today for about eight hours. I went out, he was praying. I came back, he was praying. I was very busy tidying up, tidying up some things. Started praying for morning. I came back in the evening. He was still praying in tongues. Now, that kind of prayer takes grace. Because naturally, you should be tired. And for you to keep praying like that, it means you are ascending. And so he kept praying. He kept praying. When it was 5.20, I, because I had to rush in by 4 to do a little bit of study before coming out. When it was 5.20, I went and called him. Said, let's go. As he wanted to go, I went and opened the gate. He wanted to open, I refused. I opened the gate. When we wanted to go, he felt I would sit at the back. I came and opened the door for him to sit down and closed it. I sat in front. I entered the economy he created through honor. Because I know that he was in an ascended state. And so I didn't pray for seven hours, but I partook of that economy. Because I discerned what was happening around him. And the moment I honored him, there are things we need to know. You now come, you're attacking people. People that are operating at an energy level. You don't want to go far. But let's do a teaching. Let me do Bible study. So you know how evil people who are under you, you can draw from them. Somebody can go for VG and come back. He's tired as he's sleeping. You go and boil hot water. The moment the person wakes up, serve him water, say shower. When he showers, get him something to eat. You have entered something. It's called equation. It's the spiritual equation. <laughs> it's the doctrine of power. Power. There are those you generate and there are those you draw. And there are different technologies. That's why I said, I will enter the complex one. But let's do basic first. <laughs> let's do basic. Let's do some. Ah! Dear Lord Jesus. I want to I want to teach from a note so we can keep to time. But there's a body. Let me migrate my document quickly. It's like some things are being depleted. Unto Yeshua. Who reigns forever? Hmm. And so let's do definition of terms. I will list six kinds of power six we will do four tonight because four will help me explain levels and dynamics because those are the two major things i want to teach tonight i want to teach you about the levels of power and the dynamics or the dimensions of power dimensions not dynamics all of this is the dynamics so there are six kinds of power we'll be considering as we try to study the doctrine of power. The first kind of power is called RK. RK. Luke 20, verse 20. This kind of power is leadership, is preeminence, and is the ability to affect society. It's a kind of authority that makes you lead and to shape society. You know, power is not just about praying long or healing the sick or having encounters and visions. There's a kind of power that a man possesses that helps him to affect territories. That's the kind of power Joseph had. They can shape things because they deal with thrones and they can draw the virtues that are invested in thrones to shape civilizations 
and to renew the scope and the shape of territories. In Luke 20, 20, he said, and they watched him and sent forth spices which should feign themselves just men that they might take hold of his word that they might deliver him unto. Now this was Jesus. They were monitoring him to pick his words to take the words to. They now introduce us to a kind of power. This power has the ability to determine things in society and so the word power here they wanted to take jesus to that power that power that has the ability to bind and to dictate for society that was the power they wanted to take jesus to but they needed him to be take caught off guard through the things he spoke so that he become legal for that power to exert its authority so this kind of power is highly legalistic but it is invested on thrones. So there is a power that thrones bear that makes what they say to become law in the territory. And I'll explain this to you. You can be a king and not reign. Solomon became a king. It took some years before Solomon began to reign. It is exousia that brings you to kingship. But reigning the ability to talk and society will respond. The ability to show up and society will honor you is a type of power. That power is tied to a throne, but it is not just about the throne. It's the ability to shape territory. So it makes you come first. So when you see a man who begins to stir a revolution, when you see a man, at least one is happening now, he has not entered the throne yet, but everywhere he goes to, Everybody is singing his name. That kind of power is called a king. And if that man ascends the throne, he can change things. That's why his message is, when I come, I will change the economy. Because that power, it arrests the hearts of men, commands their allegiance, and makes them submitted to you. Anything you do, they follow. Because you become first in rank. It's a kind of power. It's called a king. This type of power... Is what we will do with when we begin to deal with deeper dynamics because it deals with legalities it deals with structures it deals with wisdom it deals with character a lot is involved to be able to wield this kind of power the reason some persons have exousia they are in authority but nobody respects them is because they don't have a key so a man can be in government but all he's doing is marrying wives have you seen some kings in recent times that are only marrying wives. So a king that should be hallowed, they now look at him and say, all he's doing now is marrying. He's a, he's a king that marries. So he, he's in a, a place of authority, but he doesn't have honor. So there's exousia, but there's no ake. So when that kind of king speaks, people say, go sleep. Stop to the, make noise here. That's a king they are talking to. But there's another king that when he's coming, people will dress up and stand on the road just to wave him. Even if he talks, if it has not yet become a law, they will start doing it. So such kings don't talk. In fact, they are careful to tell you what they desire. Because if they just say, I desire this, people will kill themselves for it to happen. It's called a key. It's a type of power. But that power has a lot of dynamics. That's the power that makes you truly become influential and gives you the authority to shape a civilization. And the church must master this kind of power. But because it's not what we are dealing with tonight, let me define another one. Anakazo. Luke 14 23. He created a banquet, nobody came. He now said, Go to the highway and compare. This one is a power that overrides your will. So there is a kind of power you can come into that when you talk, even if people don't like it, they have no choice. I give you a, a, a physical ex a, a example. Somebody has a company. He puts CCTV cameras everywhere. They are still stealing. He comes and threatens them that if you steal, you will be fired. They are still stealing. In fact, he brings charms and plants in the office. They are still stealing. He will warn. They are still stealing. There's a power he lacks. The power that overrides the will of men. That Anakazu is not there. Whereas there's another man that says, if you want to steal, steal. <laughs> And everybody will advise themselves not to steal. 
they, they, don't, they don't just want to imagine what will happen. Because that one is a compelling force. The moment you discern what the person wants, you enslave yourself to it. It's called anakazo. It's a type of power. And there's a technology for wielding this power. We will deal with that because this one too is a bit advanced. Then you have the common powers that we know. Okay, let me define another one before I come to the ones we know. There's a power called energio. Energio is in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 6. It said, that self-same spirit walketh in us. So this power gives you the ability to walk a dimension, to walk a protocol, to walk a reality. In fact, for you to be able to operate dunamis, for you to be able to operate exousia, for you to be able to operate iskus and kratus, you must first of all have energy. It's as energy begins to work in you that you begin to maximize dunamis. Everybody here, if you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, there's dunamis on your inside. But you may need another power to awaken dunamis. That's why you can't speak in tongues. You just lie down, you sleep. Even when you want to speak in tongues, you sleep and doze off. You want to read the Bible, you doze off. There is a power that activates. That is the power that works. That power is called energy. And there is a dynamic for awakening that power. So as we are dealing with the dynamics of power, the doctrine of power, we will look at how to operate a K, we'll look at how to operate an Akazo, and we'll look at how to operate Energio. These ones will give you advantages that will make you impactful in your generation and in your territory. But there are other dimensions of power that you need for everyday living. Very vital. Number one is Exousia. Exousia is delegated authority or power of antonym. It is tied to a position. That's why I was using the office of a governor a moment ago. So that kind of power is related to a position. This is why the moment you were born again, you became exousiad. He said in John 1.12, that as many as received him, to them he gave the exousia to become the sons of God. So it is a right kind of power, positional kind of power, that helps you to wield the authority of another. Are we together? It's called exousia. A policeman standing on the road, even if he has not eaten, if he stretches his hand, a trailer will stop. Naturally speaking, the trailer should be able to crush him. But what is operating with is exousia. It is the government that bestowed that authority on him. So when he lifts his hand, the trailer, even though the trailer is many tones heavier than the policeman, has much more energy. The prayer, the trailer will have to stop. Because, in, in fact, when you see some policemen, you will appreciate Susia. You are going to some places and you see officer will come like this. Stop there! The smaller ones are more aggressive. You will not look at him and a giant will stand like this. Keep quiet! Sometimes, Susia is more glorified with soldiers. You see a soldier walking like this. And this soldier is at your waist. And then somebody who gyms will come with muscles. The soldier will say, do frog jump. He will carry himself and his muscles and be doing the frog jump. If he box the soldier, <laughs> the person will faint. But the guy has exousia. So exousia doesn't have to do with inner strength. It is delegated. And so when your revelation begins to grow, you begin to grow in exousia. So you know how that power came and you know how to align with it. So it's an authority kind of power delegated upon you because of the position you have been brought into this is why we had to be brought into a position with christ to be able to operate exousia and then you have what we call dunamis dunamis is inherent power and is the ability to create change and so the policeman even though he has exousia if it's on the seven days fast he won't have energy to raise his hand so one power authorizes him to be able to coordinate the affairs but another power gives him the energy to first to come and walk the other power. So if the man is hungry, if he has not eaten for 14 days, even though raising his hand can stop a trailer, there will be no energy to raise the hand. So the ability to cause changes is a kind of power. That one is inherent and intrinsic. It's called dunamis. And then you have what we call iskus. Iskus and kratos are two kinds of power. 
But these kinds of power, they are like the foundations of exousia and dunamis. I will deal with them a bit more thorough. But the way it works is this. No. Iskus and Kratos are the foundation of the Kratos is the foundation of dunamis. Iskus is the foundation of exousia. Hold that in your mind. When I'm explaining dimensions, I will touch it better. And then you have what we call megatos. Megatos is a type of power that quantifies the outcomes of your manifestation. It's in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 20. It's called mighty power. Mighty power. Great power. So when Jesus was raised from the dead, he said Megatos was at work. He said that was the power he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him in the right hand of God in heavenly places. So these are seven major dimensions of power or eight major dimensions of power. But because I want to show you about levels of power, I will pick out four of them as a case study. So as I show you levels, I will also show you dimensions. So let's begin with levels. The reason levels are important is because you may have something but you may not have it enough. And so that thing you have is actually the right thing you should have. But you are not getting the desired result because you don't have it enough. And so in the economy of power, every result has a measure. If the measure is not attained, the manifestation will not come. Even, at least almost all of us here, we've written exams before. There's such a thing called F9. When you have F9, it means zero. But actually, you score 39 points. But what will give you a pass is 40. So, the person who scored 14 is the same as the person who scored 39. Because all of them don't have enough. In fact, the guy who scored two... <laughs> is same as the guy who scored 38. All of them are called F9. So, there is a one mark <laughs> that is so important. In order not to be grouped with the guy who scored 1, add 1 to 39, so you make 40. Because if you are not in 40, you are in F9. So, there is no F9 that is better than the other. Everybody is, everyone is what? F9. So, that's how power works. There is a level you must attain to produce a result. Now, when you on your generator at home, you on the bulbs, you won't hear any sound from the gen. But the moment you plug electric heater, the gen will produce a different sound. And if the gen doesn't have sufficient KVA, the gen will what? Trip off. That means the gen can produce electricity, but it doesn't produce sufficient electricity to deal with heater. So you see some people, they wake up in the morning, Somebody has a headache. They pray for the person. Headache goes. They confront cancer. The faith is good, but virtue has to flow. On the scale of faith, the lowest faith can deal with the highest problem. But the problem is that there are dynamics in this matter. In Luke 6, 19, when they taught Jesus, Jesus didn't know. So Jesus' faith was not working. He said virtue went out of him. So it was the virtue that healed the people, not his faith. And most of the things you deal with is virtue that will go to work. You will only deploy faith when you are conscious. And there are many things happening in and around your life that you are not conscious of. So you need virtue in sufficient measure to deal with those things. You have sufficient power to run a kiosk. God now gives you a vision, like Sister Carissa was teaching, to start a supermarket. The demons that fight people who have supermarkets, the aggression with which they come is different from the ones who manage or battle with people who have kiosk. And so as you are going to supermarket level, you need more capacity. If you don't have more capacity, you will be shocked that all the business ideas you had that made your kiosk the most excellent kiosk. Have you gone to some kiosk before? They put some lights, they put chandelier, they put standing fan. You now say, I've mastered the art of trading. You go into a mall. You will suddenly discover you start struggling. What is the problem? There's not enough power. You need to generate more power to deal with that matter. Because you can light bulb in one room. If the room becomes 50, you need a mechanical. 
The generator that lights that bulb in one room can't light 50 rooms. So in the natural, we understand it, but in the spirit, we don't. That's why we struggle. We don't know that powers are in levels. Ah! Kai, this teaching is not for today. Let's praise Jesus and go. Ah, see the time. <laughs> hey! Somebody should speak to this clock and slow it down. <laughs> there is also a power. It's a, it's a level. <laughs> It's a level of power. You wait. Every 10 minutes, you remove 7 minutes. <laughs> it's a level. But it's a protocol. Ah! Okay, let me add some gears. I'll just explain fast. I'll explain fast and then we'll move. I will use some scriptures to explain this level so that it can become graphic to you. If you study 1 Corinthians chapter 12, from verse 6 to verse 11, you will notice something. In fact, in verse 7, after the Bible revealed that it's the Holy Ghost that worked these things in us, it began to show us some gifts of the Spirit. And for those of you who study the scripture in details, you are going to find out that these gifts are separated into three cadres. And you will know why you can't everybody who has the holy ghost should function in the nine gifts but not everybody operates in the nine gifts because it takes certain levels of energy to operate in the nine gifts that's why before he spoke about the gift he spoke about energy in verse 7 he said it is the holy ghost that energies this gift and everybody who understands energy knows that energy is in levels for those of you who are scientists that do something or have done something around electromagnetic radiation and all of that you know that electrons are at different energy level. It looks the same uniform, but it's not so. That's how this power works. So when the Holy Ghost is energizing you, there are levels. And so when he gave us the nine gifts of the Spirit, he grouped them into three. As you begin to study from verse 8, let me show you something. He said, for to one is given the word of knowledge. He said, to another is given the word of knowledge. To one is given to the word of, word of wisdom. He said to another is given the word of knowledge. Now when you study this, you are going to find out something. The word another, using between word of wisdom and word of knowledge is alos. And alos means of the same kind. There's another word called hecteros. Hecteros means of a different kind. And so when he was talking about word of wisdom and word of knowledge, he grouped them as of the same kind. Now, between word of, no, word of knowledge and the gift of faith, which is in the next verse, he didn't use alos. He now used hecteros. He said to another, he's giving the word of knowledge. He now said to another, this time around, that another is no longer alos, it's hecteros. He's given faith. That means faith and word of knowledge are different levels. Because remember, in verse 7, he said it's energy that is working. So these energies are in what? Levels. Word of knowledge, word of wisdom in one level. Then he started from faith. He now mentioned five other gifts until he came to discerning of spirits. Those five gifts he mentions there are all alos, 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 alos five times. Go and study your Bible. If you have a concordance, tap it, you will see. Alos, alos, alos. The moment he reached the signing of spirit, he now migrated to diverse kinds of tongues. There is another between the signing of spirit and diverse kinds of tongues. That another is no longer alos, it's now hecteros. And so he spoke about diverse kinds of tongues and interpretation of tongues. So you will notice that diverse kinds of tongues and interpretation of tongues is one level. The next five gifts, which are the power gifts, faith, workings of miracles, healing, discerning of spirits are a group and then you come to the prophetic gifts which is word of knowledge word of wisdom is another group because the energies are different if you now study acts of the apostles chapter 2 you will discover that the apostles were entering these gifts one by one in acts chapter 2 they began from the lowest energy all of them were speaking in tongues but as they began to journey the next gifts that were unfolding the bible now began to specify the few individuals that were operating it 
because speaking in tongues is the lowest energy level so when the holy ghost came all of them were walking in it but the moment they came into acts chapter 3 acts chapter 4 and the power gift were introduced that was another the energy level not all of them were operating in it anymore the bible began to specify for example it said peter and john went to the place of prayer at the hour of prayer that is acts 10 now peter says such as i have it's not such as we have in the speaking of tongues all of us have it but now that we are dealing with power we are different if you study acts 4 33 he said he gave them great power acts 4 33 you now go to acts 5 and the bible said peter acts 5 15 was going coming out of the place of prayer he now said his shadow he didn't say their shadow it was Peter's shadow. Peter was not the only one that came out of prayer. All of them spoke in tongues. That's one level. But when they moved to the higher level, which is the power level, he said the shadow of Peter. This time around, it's no longer group. When it has to do with tongues, everybody can speak in tongues. But when it has to do with power, there is something you do to come to a higher energy level. And so he said only Peter's shadow was healing the sick. There were many persons the sun was hitting. There were many shadows that were on the road but it was peter's shadow that was healing the sick because peter had graduated to another energy level and so all of them can speak in tongues but few of them can operate power and then you see the same peter in acts chapter 5 when ananias came to lie to him he said why have you allowed satan enter your heart why have you allowed satan enter your heart peter is now functioning by word of knowledge Peter is now functioning by discerning of spirits. It was no longer everybody. And so, if you don't know that power is in energy level, you will now be quoting Acts 1.8. After many days, you shall receive the Holy Ghost and power. You say all of us have power. What do you mean? All of us have power. It's true. Come, let all of us go and cast out devils. All of us have power. This woman has cancer. Let all of us pray and see if all of us will address the cancer. All of us have power. This person's business is not working. Come with that power and speak. Let's hear the testimony. If the testimony doesn't come, it means we have power, but our levels in power is different. Because all of us have power, but our power is in different energy levels. There's an energy level where you manifest a power that is enough to light bulbs. There's another energy level where you emit power that can power gas cooker. So if your power level can only emit bulb, enjoy light. But when you want to eat food, you have to look for the man who can generate gas cookers to cook. This is why some believers go to other believers. Because if your power cannot fire up a gas cooker, you will have light. Nobody will argue. In the night, all of us will read books. But when we are hungry, not all of us will eat. And if you want to eat, you either learn how to increase your energy level to also power a gas cooker, or quickly look for the person who is already powering gas cooker. Let him give you food. Many people die of arrogance because they think we are all the same. In salvation, we are the same, but in kingdom, we are different. And one of the areas of difference are the power energy levels that we are operating. This thing I'm telling you is replete in scripture. You can find the signs here and there in the Bible. If you study the tabernacle, there are three sessions. The man who is in the outer court is not the same as the man in the inner court. It's not the same as the man in the Holy of Holies. The man in the outer court interacts with the sun. The man in the inner court interacts with the menorah. The man in the Holy of Holies interacts with the Shekinah. So if three of them tell you we saw light, they saw different things. One saw sun, another one saw God. They are different things. So the manifestations will be different. It will take certain engagements for you to upgrade your energy level. And so your Christian experience will be a frustration until you know what to do to begin to grow in power. The, the potential of power was given to everybody in the Holy Ghost, but it behoves you to now grow from one energy level to another energy level. Some believers are 20 years, they are still at the foundational level of power. And they come to church, they speak in tongues, they act bogus, but you don't find any genuine thing in their lives. 
because they've not grown consciously in power and so the first thing you must learn in the school of power is how to move from one energy level to another energy level there is a power that creates basic change there is a power that creates very serious change and there is a power that creates specific change if you enter any day any time it will respond to you it's not luck it's not chance it's power but that power or that manifestation operates at an energy level and so one of the things we'll be dealing with in order to grow your energy level in power is what i'll begin to deal with from next week's bible study but tonight to also open us up a bit to dimensional operations of power this is our introduction are we together are we together it are some things beginning to make sense to you when you travel you see a lot of things and it will humble you a preacher can be talking and sweating for one hour 40 minutes and nothing is happening he will step down another preacher will come up and in five minutes the hall will erupt you are now wondering god are you biased meanwhile this first preacher is saying holy ghost move holy ghost move in the name of jesus he said everything correct but there was no power he will now go down another preacher will come up see for those of you also are traveling ministers <laughs> you need to know what power is as the person sits down before he leaves the hall the next person will just come up as he carries the mic he will just lift his hand and suddenly the angels will wake up you now wonder where were, where were they people will start screaming people will start prophesying healings will start taking place the first person is it not the word of god he preached it's the word of god but one spoke theology another one spoke power and demons don't understand theology they understand power and so if you need victory in life you must grow from one energy level to the other next week i will teach how to migrate from one energy level to another energy level because there are energy levels in god and then you have dimensions of power dimensions of power shows you how power operates and i said i will use four to explain I spoke about dynamics. I spoke about exousia. I spoke about kratos. And I spoke about iskus. Mm. When time is a limitation, you there's so much to say, you don't even know which one you should say or stop. Not to worry. We'll deal with it deeper next week. Dynamics is the power to create change. There are many believers who trust in God, but they can't create change. And so they come to church faithfully, they serve God faithfully, but things are going wrong in their lives. And they are wondering, this person believes this thing. I also believe it. They even take time to begin to study their belief system, if it is their belief that is wrong. Sometimes it's not your belief that is wrong. It's the absence of power that is frustrating you. And so if you know how to cooperate with the power that creates change, you will see that your belief will begin to receive manifestation and substantiation. Are we together? So the power that creates change is a specific power. It's called dynamis. That power came to you when you received the Holy Spirit. In Acts 1.8, it said, Not many days from now, you shall receive the Holy Ghost and power and you shall be witnesses unto me so the deposit of that power came to you when you received the holy ghost however it is a potential if you want that power to begin to work there's something you must do to engage it and the bible showed us clearly in james 5 16 it said elijah is a man subject to like passion just as we are he said he prayed earnestly that it should not rain and it rained not on the face of the earth for three and a half years he said he prayed again and the heavens gave rain so what happened in the old testament was that when god wanted to create a change god will now allow the anointing to come upon them and so as they stir themselves up 
they connect with that anointing and create a change. But in the New Testament, the anointing doesn't come upon us. It lives on our inside. And so we no longer create change when God comes. We create change when we want. And the only time that can work is when we stare that unction. This is why Ephesians 3.18 said, God is able to do exceeding abundantly according to the power that works on your inside. And the way to stare that power is what James 16 tells us. He said, is by what? Praying. By praying. By praying. This is why the moment we receive the Holy Ghost, the gift that accompanied it is tongues. And so you find many believers, they want to create change, but they are not praying in tongues. And so their faith is ready, but they don't see the result. I've seen many people who tell me they were bold, they were confident, they were not afraid, but they prayed for the deaf ear, it didn't open. Yes, you were not afraid, but you didn't have virtue. You have to generate virtue in the place of prayer. And as you are generating this virtue, you must be careful to know that that thing you are confronting, make sure you have hit the energy level to address it. So it's not just to pray in tongues. It's to pray in tongues enough to be able to address what you are looking for. This is why we always encourage people to pray through. And that's why I tell people, don't pray with time. Pray into encounters. Pray into ascension. When you are praying and your tank is full, there are many indicators that show you. Number one is that you receive a note of victory. There's an assurance. Sometimes when you are praying, you're praying to prophecy. You start prophesying. What you've done is that you've stirred dynamics to a point where it can produce result. As you pray that prayer into prophecy, anything you say must happen because you've prayed through. But the challenge with dynamics is that it is momentary. Every time you want to use dynamics, you must stir it. Because dynamics is like, see the gen. As you power the gen, it brings light. If you off the gen, the light goes off. So if I'm going for a crusade, I can tear my spirit up for two hours, for three hours, and dynamics is generated. I go for that crusade, I pray for a blind person. If I wake up tomorrow morning, and if all I have is dynamics, and I see another blind person, fear will hit my heart. And if I go boldly and pray, the eye won't open. That's why some evangelists only manifest on crusade ground. There are many evangelists who see the dead on crusade ground rise. They see cripples walk. But the moment they come down from that platform, they become weak. They will never see any manifestation. The reason is because when they are going to the crusade ground, they pray through. And so they don't see any opposition. There's too much power. They can change things. But when that power is used up, they become normal like everybody. And so anybody who is walking dunamis must support dunamis with a foundation. The foundation of dunamis is called kratos. While in dunamis you pray through, in kratos you pray consistently. So you don't pray because you are going for a crusade. You pray because prayer is now your life. That's when kratos comes to work. So you see two kinds of people praying. There is one who prays to preach. There is one who prays when there is a problem. That person will be getting momentary victory. But the guy who prays as a lifestyle, challenges don't come around him. That guy does not fluctuate. He doesn't have one great manifestation today and tomorrow he's at the lowest level of his life. His life is upward and forward only because as he prays and keeps praying, he begins to go to levels where he no longer descends. And so he remains at that level. And he prays until he steps into another level and he lives there. There are certain men who are more powerful when they wake up than an evangelist on the crusade ground. Because they have 10 years of consistent prayer. And so the energy level where they operate, if they say, it is well with you, it will be more potent than somebody who just came out of three days fasting. Because that person is generating power to address a situation, the other one is living in the realm of power. And so a Christian who wants to maximize power must know when to pray through, and he must also pray as a lifestyle. Bruce Lee made a statement, very profound. He said he's more afraid of a man who gives one punch in a thousand days than a man who gives a thousand punch in one day. There's one man who can punch one thousand times in one day. There's another man who punches once every day for one thousand days. The one who punches once every day for one thousand days is more powerful than the one who punches a thousand times in one day. This is why you find some believers, they say we are going to the mountain. They pray in tongues for 40 hours. When they finish, they go on holidays. 
The next time they come for prayer is four weeks later. And they say, we are back here. We are back here. So their life is like this. The map of their life is zigzag. That, fact, that day they prayed, any devil that comes, they roast that devil. That day they prayed, anything that is a challenge, they change it. Three days later, they become like an ordinary person. And then you find another believer who wakes up every day praying in tongues for 30 minutes. Every day he prays in tongues for 30 minutes. His life will be going like this. And he will be going upward only because this one has stamina. Any challenge he meets, there is enough power bank to deal with it. So what do you do in order to operate in the power that creates change? Learn to pray through from time to time but most importantly, learn to pray consistently. The man who prays through can create momentary change. But the man who prays consistently will always live a life of progress. Because there is enough power to change things. I'm showing you why people are calling upon the name of the Lord and it looks as if their God is not answering them. No! God answered us in Christ Jesus. We must walk that mechanism through these technologies that he has made available. And so there is Dunamis and there is also Kratos. Donamis is momentary, but Kratos is eternal. Donamis is operated when you pray through, but Kratos is operated when you pray consistently. And so you are a believer today, you want to walk in power. Give yourself a simple schedule. Pray every day for 10 minutes. After a while, naturally your capacity will grow. You want to pray for 10 minutes, you discover you prayed for 15 minutes. After a while, your capacity will grow. You want to pray for 15 minutes, you discover you pray for 30 minutes. A point will come, you will discover even the things you are not praying about will be happening. People will favor you, doors will open to you, you will not know why. Somebody will be sick, you won't even know. You just came to the house and touched the person. And when you left, the person noticed fever is gone. You were not consciously praying for the person. What you were doing is you were just emitting power. This is how Jesus lived his life. In Mark 1.35, it said daily, in the cool of the day, Jesus went to a solitary place. There, he prayed. Daniel practiced the same thing. Daniel 6.10, it said every day, three times, Daniel prayed facing Jerusalem. You see why these men were powerful. Nothing took them on a worse. A man who has dynamics can be taken on a worse. In fact, he can leave a crusade ground and the devil will attack his house. Because the energy generated was for that crusade. He got results there. But the devil came with a reprisal attack. But the man who has Kratos, anytime you come around him, you are in trouble. Because there is more than enough power. He is not praying through. He has prayed through, but he's praying consistently. These two kinds of power is what gives you the perpetual ability to create change. And so if you are not creating change in your life, two kinds of power are lacking. Either dynamics is lacking, or Kratos is lacking. And trust me, you will need changes every day because demons don't rest. The challenges of life, they don't have appointments. They come any day, any time. And so you must be power ready if you want to live a victorious life. Don't say you were not told. All this hoping that God will intervene, will intervene, is why many believers are falling into depression. Because God already intervened when he gave you the right to speak in tongues. As you start speaking in tongues, either for a long time to pray through or consistently, you are generating the power that is already on your inside. The Holy Ghost brought that power, but there is a mechanism for regulating it. When you pray through, you create momentary change, but when you pray consistently, your life becomes an evolution of progressive change. That is the first dynamic of power that a believer must understand. And if you begin to censor your life now, you can tell why some of the things you were looking for have not happened. Simple, but powerful way of living. Many pastors are not praying. Many believers are not praying. Thank God for the corporate gathering. Thank God for the corporate prayer. But your life demands more than that. 90% of the corporate prayers have prayer points that don't concern you. You came for corporate prayer. They prayed for five hours. They are praying for the country. They are praying for the ministry. Sometimes they even pray for the man of God more than you. Meanwhile, you are the one laboring in prayer. So while you are here doing that, you must build your own altar. That your own altar generates the power for your own destiny. We can donate money and buy fuel for man of God. What about your car? You can donate money and buy fuel and trek home. 
So while you are doing one, you must do the other in order to sustain a victorious life. The second dynamic or dimension of power is the power that operates through authority. This particular one is internal. It creates change, but it's inherent. There is another one that is authority-based. And even the authority-based power has two dynamics. One, which is exousia, is born out of revelation. That's why I call it a positional power. The moment you become aware of who you are in Christ, you begin to exercise authority. The moment you become aware of what Christ has done for you, you begin to function in exousia. That's why I said, as many as believe, to them he gave the exousia to become the sons of God. So these ones know what they believe. They know who they are in Christ. And so on the strength of that, they can make things happen. So it's not necessarily what they are feeling. It's not necessarily what they have generated, but it is based on the light that they see. And so a man can discover that in Christ, he's not supposed to be sick. And so on the strength of that light, he sees that health begins to spring out of his spirit. A man can discover that in Christ Jesus, he is made rich because Christ was made poor. Immediately, ideas for wealth creation begins to spring forth. That revelation will empower him. But the challenge with exousia is that exousia works when the revelation hits you. And so when you are meditating on scripture, if a light comes to you, on the strength of that light, you can make something happen. When you are meditating on scripture, or you are even listening to a message, a bullet of light hits you, and on the strength of that light, you rise up. You can listen to a message and you just hear that none shall desire her mate. Immediately, you tell yourself, I can't be a spinster. And that revelation that comes, we create your husband from wherever he is. He must appear. Because when you function in light, light has the power to produce results. In fact, the excellency of light is the fact that light shines in the darkness. So every time revelation comes, exousia is activated. Every time light comes, exousia is activated. And so a man who wants to continually walk in exousia must create an atmosphere where the proceeding word of God is constant. This is why Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. Because every time you pick God's word, you enter authority. Every time you pick God's word, you enter authority. But see the challenge. There are many times when it will look as if you've gone blank. How many of you have been there? You are praying over the situation. Word is not coming. You are at that junction. You are trusting God. Word is not coming. And if word does not come, exousia can't work. Because exousia is tied to revelation. Now, you are walking through a season where no word is coming. And sometimes that season can be long. I don't know if it has happened to you. Me, it has happened to me. There are many seasons where you are waiting for an inspiration. You are waiting for a light. Nothing is coming. You hear messages, it's not coming. You are fasting, it's not coming. What will you do? Meanwhile, your authority is tied to your revelation. What do you now do? You need to go deeper. Because in addition to exousia, there's such a thing called iskus. Iskus is not tied to light necessarily. But it is tied to the degree of your submission to the authority that you are hoping light will come from. And so it's one kind of authority that comes from revelation. But the second dimension of authority comes from submission. That's why in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, from verse 3 to 5, he said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. He said, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. He said, they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high standing thing that opposes itself above the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity all things to the obedience of Christ. He now gave us the key. He said, when your obedience is complete, then you shall avenge other disobedience. There are many persons who operate exousia, but they are still defeated. Because there are times when principalities war against you. Your revelation may be accurate, but your life is wrong. And so there's an authority that you will need to wield that is beyond revelation. When the devil came to Jesus, both Jesus and the devil knew he was the son of God. But he didn't fight them based on revelation. He fought them based on life. He said, the prince of this world come back to me and find it nothing. There are many believers quoting scriptures everywhere and they are dying. They are declaring they have the power of God. Things are still going wrong. Because the guy who is declaring is living in immorality. 
The guy who is declaring never submits to the authority of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost speaks one, he's doing another. And then when crisis comes, he will quickly pick one scripture, like a dagger. And when he throws that scripture a thousand times, he will miss target. Because there are certain authority that is superior to revelation. If that revelation is true, your life will first of all be submitted to it. And so while exousia comes by revelation, iskus comes by submission. And so in the day when words don't come, character and track record will become a weapon. That is the day when the devil will truly be defeated. But if character and track record is not there, even if you have that revelation, many times you'll be defeated. Because when the legalistic spirits come, they know what you will do that will make you become the enemy of yourself. And so a man who wants to grow in authority must hold exousia on one hand and carry iskus on another hand. Exousia comes by revelation of the finished works of Christ. We taught a lot of it last two weeks. When I was talking about righteousness, talking about sanctification, we showed you a lot of things. But on another hand, you must come under obedience because it's when your obedience is complete that you will avenge other disobedience. The dimensions of power insist that you pray and pray through for dynamics to work. The dimensions of power insist that you may, must pray and pray consistently for Kratos to work. The dimensions of power insist that you must have the right revelation in order to operate in authority. And above all, the dimensions of power insist that the authority you trust in, you must first of all submit to. Because if you are not submitted to that authority, you don't have the legal right to wield that authority. This is why, although power is the inheritance of the saints, but very few saints are working in it. We talk about it, we preach it, we boast about it, but the manifestations of our life shows that we don't even know the ABC of it. The guy is talking boldly about divine health, whereas he's suffering from a terminal disease. He's talking boldly about favor, talking boldly about influence, talking boldly about taking over. Yet, the very house he's living in, he's about to be kicked out. And he doesn't know what to do to take over. Because these things, they are there, but they must be walked. And you must walk each and every dimension. There is a problem you will confront that you need to pray through. And so, if you know what is good for you, you must build capacity to be able to pray through. I was speaking to a doctor friend the other day, and he said they were in the theater until 3 a.m. in the morning. That is a dynamic kind of power. There are certain things that will confront you that you need to stand and pray in tongues for three days. And so, if you don't have the capacity to pray through, you will not generate the power to deal with that problem. You may have a great destiny, but one momentary attack will bury that destiny. Because that destiny demanded dynamis, and you didn't have the capacity to generate it. Whereas there are other destinies that are battles that are battles of attrition. They come every one, one week. For that kind of battle, you don't pray through, you pray consistently. So anytime it comes, you are ready.